Hey everyone, a while back I made this video and it got over a million views and you guys had a lot of questions about how to hang curtains. In the video, I was only able to explain the basic do's and don'ts on how to hang curtains. I wasn't able to go more in depth. So today, that's what we're gonna try and do. I'm gonna go through all your questions and I'm gonna read all your comments, even the bad ones, and we are gonna try and cover more in depth, more specific questions that you guys had. Some topics that we're gonna cover are how to deal with radiators, how to deal with awkwardly positioned windows, some common misconceptions, unusual window shapes and how to deal with those, and a few other things. So if you haven't seen my previous video, I would definitely recommend going back and watching that for some basic tips on curtain hanging. These are gonna be more specific, in-depth tips. We've got a lot of ground to cover today, so let's get started. So let's take a look at awkward window situations. A lot of architects do weird things, and unfortunately not all windows are placed in the middle of a perfect wall, it's perfectly centered with the right amount of space on either side of the window to hang your panels. I get that. So we're gonna look at what to do if your window butts right up against the wall with little to no space. And we're also gonna look at what to do if you have a really short window with a lot of space below it and how to dress that. If your window is in a corner or very close to a wall on one side, it can become a problem if you wanna follow the tip that I talked about in my previous video about extending the rod out a fair ways beyond the window frame. Because obviously the problem is that you can't extend out equally on both sides. In this case, I'd probably refrain from hanging curtains altogether because it would just look too cramped in my opinion. And I'd probably go for hanging blinds or a Roman shade instead. So for corner windows at 90 degrees, you can hang curtains, of course, but it becomes a little trickier because you need to make sure that you're not skimping on the fabric. If you don't have enough wall between your window frame and your corner, if you want a substantial panel that doesn't look skimpy, then you might end up needing to cover a portion of your window, which is not ideal because then you're blocking out light. So if you do have enough space and you are able to put drapery in your corners, I would recommend going with with two separate rods, one on each window, and I would definitely have two sets of panels, so two panels per window. The other option is to use like a corner rod where there's like a hidden corner connector, but I would definitely hide that. And the way to do this is just to make sure that the two corner panels are right up against each other. If you've got a corner with a full glass wraparound window, I would not advise to use rods. For a cleaner look, I would use a ceiling track. So another awkward window situation is definitely the tiny basement window, which are typically small and placed high, so they have a lot of wall underneath them. So I know I said in my curtains video that you should always hang your curtains long, but this is definitely one case where I think this rule should be broken. I honestly don't think that any of these solutions look very good. I think that if you have a small high window and you use long curtains that touch the floor, it just ends up looking disproportionate. The solution I would opt for probably would be a shade or a blind. I think it looks a lot neater and a lot more elegant and most of all, a lot more proportionate to the space. So another question that came up a ton was what to do with dressing windows that have a radiator or some kind of heating element right below the window. This is a very common problem. Nowadays, homes are built with much better insulation, so it may not be as crucial to place radiators and baseboard heaters under windows. But the fact is that most of us live in homes where we have heating of some sort under our windows. So because of this, there are always tons of questions about how to dress windows with radiators under them, especially if you want to use full length curtains, because if you close your curtains and your radiators are on, you'll block the heat from reaching the room. My favorite workaround for this problem is definitely to layer blinds or shades with long curtain panels. This way you use the blinds or the shades for the privacy and the curtains are purely decorative. So basically you just never close them. A lot of people do this and it looks great. So the misconception is that if you have a large piece of furniture or any piece of furniture in front of a window, you can't have long panels. This simply isn't true. If you look at any photo of an interior, for example, a living room that has a sofa in front of a window, you'll see that there's absolutely no reason why you can't have long drapes that fall right behind a piece of furniture. 
Another misconception is about where to find long curtains. So many people were in the comments saying, you can't find long curtains, you have to get them custom made and then it's expensive. In general, for standard size ceilings, you can find curtains that are 96 inches and longer in pre-made panels. It's not a problem, they're on Amazon, they're at Walmart, they're at Ikea, you can find them everywhere. So I will provide links to those. Um, it's not true that you have to go custom if you want long curtains. Unusual window shapes. There are so many different types of windows, but the ones that I think people struggle with most are arch windows. So we're gonna look at some different options for those. And then there's transom windows as well. And then people had questions about bay windows and how to dress those. And then there's the issue of having like super, super high vaulted ceilings. How do you dress windows in a situation like that? With arch windows, my recommendation generally is to treat them like a normal window whenever possible. So hang your rod directly above the arch, ideally with some breathing room between the top of the arch and the rod. If you have a Palladian window with a bit of breathing room between the arch and the lower portion of windows, a solution like this looks beautiful, where you leave the arch exposed. If the arch is connected, then hanging the rod high and treating the whole window as one unit is the best solution. Some designers also suggest doing multiple rods and heights, but I prefer a cleaner look, but that's an option if you want as well. The problem is when you have an angled ceiling which doesn't allow for the rod to be hung cleanly over the top. In that case, sometimes it can work to hang the rod below the arch, but I would usually only recommend this if your ceilings are very high. In general, I'd be very careful about placing your rod below the arch. Look at the difference the position of the rod and curtains can make on an arched window. Some solutions I would wholeheartedly suggest you stay away from are cutting across the arch with a rod, weird custom arch hooks, curved arch rods, and segmented rods. Just no. If you have transom windows above your windows, designers usually recommend placing the rod above the transom, unless A, there's some element directly above the transom that would prevent it from being there, like an angled ceiling or a beam, or B, the transom windows are really high up and with a large amount of wall space between the bottom windows and the upper transom windows, in which case it would look weird to treat the two groups of windows as one. Using shades on just the transoms sometimes can also be a good solution too. With bay windows, you usually run into the same situations over and over. You can find bay windows with radiators or a built-in window seat under them, and bay windows with or without a soffit in front of them. Usually it'll be a combination of any of these things. For situations with radiators and window seats, you may want to skip curtains altogether, but you still have a lot of cool options, don't worry. You can do Roman shades, wooden blinds, and shutters and roller blinds are also an option. If you have a soffit and low or normal height ceilings, you can mount the drapes outside the bay window. If you have high ceilings and tall bay windows and no window seat, mounting the curtains under the soffit and framing each window will probably look best. You can get bay window drapery hardware as well with adjustable rods that follow the angles of your windows, and you can find these ready-made at places like Home Depot. If you get into custom made stuff for your bay windows, obviously it's gonna get pricey. Things I would definitely stay away from are bay window valances, or valances of any kind for that matter, using a lot of heavy drapery or anything that looks too overdone. If your window treatments are starting to look like an 18th century ball gown, it's probably a sign that you've gone too far. A lot of new builds have what they call these great rooms with soaring ceilings, and it can be really intimidating to think about window treatments for spaces like these. My first question for these spaces is always, do you even need to cover your windows? If you don't have a privacy or light control issue, I would rather leave the windows bare and allow the simplicity of the architecture to shine through. There's no rule anywhere that says that you have to have window treatments. Just look at all these examples of beautiful vaulted rooms with absolutely no window treatments whatsoever. Of course, it's always all about personal preference. So if you do need or want window treatments in a room with really high ceilings, I would generally recommend avoiding the use of two-story curtains. I think having that much fabric is distracting and rather than helping the room, I think it can actually look a little ostentatious. In most cases, you can get away with hanging your rods across the lower section of windows, leaving the upper windows untreated. It'll look much better. I hope you like this video, and if you like home decor content, definitely consider subscribing, and I will see you next time. Bye!